Congresswoman Nicole Malliotakis is the daughter of a Cuban immigrant, and she joins me now live to react. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning to you. Okay, so as I said, you're the daughter of a Cuban immigrant. Um, you also still have relatives on the island, so this has to be personal for you. It, it absolutely is. Uh, you know, I visited Cuba in 2009 to see my family there. It is incredibly sad to see how uh, not only are they stuck in time with everything around them seeming that it's in the 1950s, uh, but they don't have any aspirations or dreams or ability to pursue their goals. Uh, they're told by the government what they're going to be, what they're going to study, and what their contribution to society will be. They're treated like slaves. They earn basically about 15, what would equate to $15 a month. Uh, and there's a dual currency system in which everything is sold in, in something comparable to U.S. dollars, and yet they're making, you know, the Cuban peso. So it's, 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 it takes months for them to buy anything, a basic necessity, like a pair of shoes. So would you say, you know, you said that it's almost like they're living back in, in the 50s. Would you say this has been a long time coming for the people of Cuba? Uh, look, I'm very encouraged to see people rising and, and pushing and, and, and really uh, demonstrating that they want freedom and they want democracy. I hope this is something real that is happening there, a change now that Raul, Raul Castro is gone, that they're going to really stand up and say, no more communism, no more socialism, we want freedom. And to see them marching in the streets with the American flag is something incredibly moving to me. Uh, they, they realize that we are the free country, uh, the beacon of hope and opportunity, and they want Cuba to be like the United States of America. And then I want to read this White House statement on the protest in Cuba. It says, in, uh, in part, we stand with the Cuban people and their clarion call for freedom and relief from the tragic grip of the pandemic and from the decades of repression and economic suffering to which they have been subjected by Cuba's authoritarian regime. What is your reaction to the White House's response to everything going on? Well, look, I, I'm glad that they at least issued a statement because people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, members of the squad, are completely MIA at this point. Bernie Sanders, who's actually spoke well about the Cuban regime, uh, the communist regime, what's missing from the statement is that it's, they have to be clear that this is communism. This is socialism. We can never allow the United States of America to move in that direction. We should seize this opportunity to help the Cuban people become free. And that is, that is the one thing I want for my family there is to have that opportunity, you know, for human rights, for dignity, for freedom, for democracy, and to choose their future, to choose their future personally, to pursue their dreams, but also to have free and fair elections. And then about 30 seconds or so, you said that there's a unique opportunity for the 10 Cuban Americans serving in Congress to work with the Biden administration to push for democracy, human rights, freedom of speech, et cetera. Um, I want, in 15 seconds or so, can you elaborate on that and what could they do to help this? Look, right now they need to push to make sure people can continue to demonstrate, make sure the island doesn't shut off any internet access so the world can see what's happening there. And certainly we should not do what Obama did, which was give away everything, make so many concessions, again, nothing in exchange. We need to push them to be a more demo democratic society. We want free elections. We want to end this dual currency system, which is segregation. And most importantly, you know, these people, they need food. They need toilet paper. They need aspirin. They need the basics. So whatever we can do in humanitarian aid, but making sure it actually gets to the people, not the regime, because the regime takes everything. They live mm -hmm. like kings, and the people suffer. It's awful. Absolutely terrible what's happening. Um, Representative Nicole Malliotakis, thank you so much for your take on this this thank morning. You. Todd. Ashley, a community group in Austin, Texas, calling on the city.